Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of The Daily Sip. I'm really excited to have Andrew Roach from Andrew Andrew Roach Talent and we're going to get stuck into all things around disabled people and talent in terms of what amazing things different disabled people are up to in different industries but also how that's connecting with broadcasters and businesses and other parts of society as well. So first of all thanks for joining me Andrew. You're very welcome. It's nice to see you again after we met at the, it was the Power 100 Awards, wasn't it? Where oh, yes. We met last in the summer. very inaccessible Houses of Parliament. Who knew, right? It was a bit, uh, yeah, I remember that was like, we, we sat quite a while waiting to get in as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was also ar- around the time that there was all the problems in, um, in Parliament Square, wasn't it? So even getting there was a challenge. Yes, there was the protest, wasn't that, there? That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So even, I think was it, was it last summer? I try to remember when it was. Uh, late, late, a bit later, I think. Yeah. In, yeah. In yeah. Scotland, like, I think. Time flies, and obviously the yeah. world is the world has changed. I mean, I think first of all, it would be great for anyone watching that's that's not come across your work before. If you give a little intro, and then obviously I'd like to touch on a bit of backstory, but also sort of how COVID has affected you and some of the talent and then a look to the future that's the kind of the roadmap of today's interview yeah if you'd start off with an intro that would be fantastic so um as you said my name's andrew roach and i run andrew roach talent which is an agency looking after um clients who work in the arts broadcast uh media um, and entertainment industries and the majority of our clients um, have a visible or non-visible disability and I've kind of inadvertently become passionate about, um, <laughs> some might say annoying, um, <laughs> passionate about campaigning for better representation across, you know, diverse groups but particularly in relation to disability. Um, and so I suppose I spend a lot of my time obviously doing my day job, which is um, being an agent. Um, But uh, I also spend quite a lot of time um, campaigning. I'm a member of some um, advisory groups and just try and get in contact with as many people as possible um, to to discuss how we improve um, disability representation particularly. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, whatever part of an economy and a society you look at and the the barriers that exclude different people in different ways so many people both with a disability and just generally allies and those that are just passionate for inclusion whether they're disabled or not you know there's an element of just wanting to get on with everyday life and you know so like some of the people you represent they just want to be able to present on tv and to appear in the media but it always ends up becoming a campaign, right? Even if yeah. you don't actually think I'm a campaigner, you just invariably become a campaigner. Yeah, and that's definitely what's happened. Um, you know, and I have numerous meetings with producers and broadcasters, and quite often between us, we'll say, "I can't believe we're actually having to have this conversation still yeah. in 2020." And, and and you know, my my fundamental belief is that. I think a lot of this is subconscious and people doing things without even knowing or realising. I'd really hate to think that any of it is deliberate. But having said that, that's still not good enough. Not you know, it, yeah. We just need to be in a position where it's all about the equality of opportunity. Yeah. You know, there, there's. I don't think there's anything to be gained from people doing things just because they are a certain way or who they it, it's about the yeah, best no tokenism right no yeah, tokenism the best yeah. people being booked for for the job based on their talent and therefore that should be irrespective of anything yeah yeah i mean but i mean it's it's only in, in recent times and it's still not you know um sorted you know we, we're still having conversations about equality you know in gender and you know in so many other areas of diversity that you know and that's and I think that's the fear or not the fear that's the issue with disabilities that um for some reason I still don't understand why particularly given 
how many people identify as being disabled in the UK alone. Mm. Disability always seems to be left off or it's not even a, a secondary thought. It's like a, sometimes it's not even a thought, but it's like a last thought. Yeah. And, you know, and Adam Pearson, who look after, said to me, it was quite recently, we've worked together for quite a number of years, but he said something to me which just always sticks with me. He says a lot of things that stick with me, to be honest. He's a bit of an oracle. Um, he said, disability is the only thing that any of us at any time could become. Yeah, yeah. And do, do you think some part of society struggles to embrace disability because it's sort of this this hard like what you've just said is very striking, isn't it? That it anyone could become disabled or not even in like the dramatic having an accident, but just mm. getting older, yep. where we all develop impairments, like hearing mm. can go, sight can go more like it's not some sort of, you know, oh, you might become disabled in a really horrific way. It's just a general sort of as we get older. So I wonder if it's some, some part of society doesn't want to face that truth. And that's partly why disability gets ignored. Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, obviously there's, there's. I mean, I'm not an expert in this, but there's, there will be um, historical research and, you know, into culture and, and, and attitudes and everything that, that, that demonstrate why we're still where we are. Mm. You know, not just with disability, but obviously other areas. Of yeah, of course. Working. And it is that thing, I think, of people, people being afraid or fearful or scared of difference without realising that actually none of us are the same. We're, yeah. all, we're all different. However, there are definitely, you know, sections are, of our society who are, have been and continue to be discriminated against for absolutely no valid reason mm. whatsoever. And actually that's where the media, where broadcast, um, arts, entertainment can play such a powerful role Mm. As if it's represented on screen, if it's represented on stage, if you know wh wherever it is, it's about imparting the message and the knowledge and the understanding that you know everything is okay. Yeah, you know, in, in yeah. that sense, and and you know the, what what amuses me is, I mean, I, I've actually had someone say to me in the past within the industry, so are you only going to look after disabled people? Like that was a wrong thing to do. <laughs> And I said, well, so what if I did? What, what's the problem? Yeah. You, know, it, 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 yeah you, get, you get talent managers that only look after those in, in an indie, like a beauty space or a fitness mm. space. And, you know, in the end, disabled people, it's a community, isn't it? Exactly. But, you know, it's, it's you know, not all of our clients um, have a, or identify as having a disability. And, you know, it's not like they have to go through some disability screening. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, all, all that's happened is that through starting to represent some disabled people, I've just met more and more fascinating, talented, yeah. interesting people who also happen to be disabled. Don't get me wrong, you know, from a business point of view, particularly as an agency and particularly starting out on my own, having a point of difference is really important, has actually worked to my favour. Yeah. You know, and I'm absolutely delighted to be probably the only agent um, in my particular area. There are other um, agencies who, who specialise in representing disabled talent, but I think I'm, I'm right in saying that they're more acting or, or modelling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always crossover and some of, of our course, clients yeah, yeah. You know, act as well. But, you know, and, and there are some agencies, very normal agencies out there who have maybe one or two disabled clients and in fact I would say to everyone in the industry look at your list particularly if you're in a big agency look across your list in terms of diversity mm. and maybe you know you need to be doing something as well in this space because the fact is you know I get approached a lot I'm only well there's only me and Joe who works with me there are loads of brilliant people out there who happen to be disabled yeah. doing lots of amazing things you yourself have presented you know so you know it's it and, and it's it's really interesting I mean I have a hoot most days you know with my clients about one thing or another most of the time it's us banging our heads against a, <laughs> a brick wall about something that some a producer or a broadcaster has said or you know a decision that's been made but 
you know, not that I came into this to be rewarded on a daily basis, but my life has totally been enriched yeah. by working with disabled people. And as I say, most of the time it's because the humour and the, the stories and everything that goes on is is just brilliant, you know, yeah. and I, I love it. You know, I just and I, and I just get more empowered that this is the type of thing. And actually, more often than not, it's it's the same issues that you know lots of other people deal with, and that's what other people do realize. You know, yeah. whether it's dating or just general life or whatever, you know, and that's what needs to be represented. And it's also not just about disabled people doing presenting about disabled issues or playing a role specifically about disability you know it's just about disabled people being part of everything Mm. as they are normally you know it's just it it just staggers me that as I say particularly in 2020 I'm still having to push as hard even with the likes of Lee who I look after who won Britain's Got Talent almost two years ago he has still never been on a panel show Mm. on TV or radio ever even though he had that level of mm. fame which th- everyone with that level of fame would have ended up on a panel show right yeah so you know it's it it it, it and my question would be if he had been the first able bodied comedian yeah or non disabled comedian to win um britain's got talent we'd have his op- we don't get me wrong Lee has been very bu- busy and done a lot of things. Sure. I'm not saying panel shows are the be all and end all, but when lots of other people have done similar things to him and done panel shows, mm. why is he not doing them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. interesting the different things to break down what you're saying there, because there's obviously we both agreed earlier on that tokenism is is not there's not any need or a place for tokenism there is talent disabled talent already out there for sure and there is a double-edged sword though of if broadcasters or media or any other sort of industry don't give opportunities to nurture the talent there is a chicken and egg isn't there so whilst you might be born with an innate talent to be funny to be a comedian you still need those breaks to get to get going a bit more in a career sense. And so I think that that's partly where there's still this area we were talking about having to campaign and break through barriers. As you know, Andrew, like I'm very much in the marketing and sort of more now the influence of marketing mm-hmm. and we see it, you know, 20%-ish is the population of disabled people, yet 0.06% of adverts have representation of disability. I don't know the stats on like TV, but I'm. I know, I don't. I imagine it's what right. better. Is it five? So very. It's a bit difficult because it's not a science, is it? But, well, there is some research out there that supports the five percent percentage, right? Which, by the way, seems to have plateaued for you know a number of years, you know, and and so even and the broadcasters recently signed up or the major broadcast have signed up to a doubling disability initiative actually off screen not on screen um but even by doubling that you're still only half way to representing totally. the disabled population that, yeah. and that you know in your statistic there is i hadn't heard that that is shocking and what's more shocking about that is that the purple pounds is worth over 240 billion pounds in the uk so if you go global like it it's eight trillion is the global statistic why would you not want to engage with that totally that's what's weird right yeah not only commercially but also when when broadcasters streaming services everyone is fighting for audiences even more than ever why would you not want to directly engage with 13 million people in the uk yeah exactly every disabled person is going to like everything that you know a disabled person's in or anything like that but you know just just engage in some way with some form of you know for people to see themselves being represented and the power of that I've seen firsthand the power of that it's incredible mm. you know it, it, the likes of Lee winning Britain's Got Talent, Bryony who look after being on, on Bake Off 
you know, what with what Adam does, with what Sam Rank does. Yeah. Lucy, who we've recently started working on, became the first blind presenter on, on Radio One. You know, th- this is impactful, important stuff. It's yeah. not just to go, oh, we'll do the odd thing and then we'll go back. And that's my other thing with lockdown. Please let us not stop the momentum that was starting to, to, to form. Yeah. And I, I think I was saying to you earlier, particularly when at the moment, any excuses, which by the way were not valid previous previously, yeah. are definitely not valid now. Right. You know, having this conversation, yeah, no problem at all. Programs are being made in creative ways all the time at the moment, so there is absolutely no excuse, not that there ever was, not to include disabled talent as part of that. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you saw Andrew. I was on National BBC News on the six o'clock. News soon after lockdown started, it's about a month ago now. And Nikki Fox, the disability correspondent, messaged me on Facebook and just said, Can you do a bit to camera, do some general views? And this comes back to the power of influencers. I know you represent influencers yourself, that if you know, we're more and more capable of creating content, knowing what message is relevant to our own community, obviously, but also how to, you know use that message in a way that society understands and learns a bit more the reality not from presumption so with a with a camera phone I I did a bit at home and it was no camera crew no no one came to my house I didn't have to get up at 6am and go all the way to London which for me is quite a long way and a quite a you know tiring day and I was on primetime BBC TV no one knew that it was done on a camera phone with a little lapel mic. So it, as you Thank say, you, Martin, the world no explodes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the, the this isn't, you know, it's like when, you know, when the BBC put two women on mock the week at the same time, the world didn't explode. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. People exist, people are just getting, you know, people are capable. And that's the thing, I, you know, the thing I believe is that this is the worst thing that happens, particularly in the industry I work in. People put up barriers before they've even started to have the conversation or they, yeah. they raise issues or they use negative language or they, they say things like, well, the problem is, or, you know, when one, it's never a problem. And two, um, you know, it's it's the barriers, the barriers that exist, I believe, the only, the only ones that other people put up you know, and, and they just don't need to be there. Mm. You know, and this is and this is where it comes down to if this isn't discrimination, I don't know what I, know. I don't know what else is. And we we've totally been able to get our 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 heads around other diverse groups being discriminated against and particularly within the industry that I work in. Yet we seem to be incredibly unable, unwilling sometimes to address what this actually is yeah. and what's going on. And what continues to go on. So we, we agree that there's, there's an abundance of disabled talent. We agree that all forms of you know media and other industries should represent their viewers and their consumers, and of which 20% have a disability. And there is the law, the equalities, that's all this yeah. stuff. It's a, it's a no brainer thing, the law. Remember? Yeah, the law. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so well, I mean, I, I'm very much solutions oriented i love to 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 take that frustration and anger that quite you know rightly exists but how do we push that and energize that for change so i mean you you speak more than i do to the broadcasters what what do you think it is that is still stopping them what 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 is if you're in their shoes what's the problem (laughs) i i would love to know (laughs) i honestly would love to know i think I think there are a lot of really um, brilliant people who are very open and engaged, but there seems to be a, 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 a disconnect between the thoughts and the speaking and the willingness and the action. Yeah, and I generally, it's talk, isn't it? Yeah, and I generally don't know what the problem is because there isn't a problem. There shouldn't be a problem. You right. know, last year they finally managed to put a physically disabled person, not just comedian, on Have I Got News For You, the first time ever since it started in the 90s. And guess what? Wasn't a problem. Went really well. Um, 
you know, no one, no one died. No one died. Um, so that's what I don't get. And 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 there are so many other people out there. You were like with Nikki. You were talking about Sophie Morgan, Adi yeah. Duncan. You know, so many different people who who are brilliant at what they do, who are already working, who who just should be doing more, and then more people coming through. You know, and I think there is a general willingness um, and desire, you know, amongst producers, broadcasters for it to happen. I think it's just like any of these things, the change will just take time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's, you know, and the other thing to acknowledge, by the way, is this isn't rocket science. There's no, you know, there's no, um, there's, there's no, there's, there's, I don't know. There's nothing magical that needs to happen. Just need to get on and do it, and that's what will start the change. Yeah. Just by having people on things across the board all the time. It's yeah. really that you know, and and looking. So looking back at, for example, decisions. I mean, I'm not. I'm sure this is the case, um, but I haven't had a definitive response as to why this is the case from a couple of broadcasters, but two major drama series being produced during lockdown. Um, I think there's over 20 actors across both these series and different broadcasters, no disabled actor in, mm. in any, either of them. Why? Mm. Yeah, why? Indeed. It's the, crazy. Why is that still happening? Yeah, yeah. And And some, you know, there are people, you know, there to monitor these things, you know, not let least let's forget with the BBC particularly, they represent the public. Their money comes from public funding, yeah. including 20% of the population. Yeah. So at the very least, you know, we we should have we should at least be seeing or, or people should at least be being um auditioned which I also don't believe happened in either of these cases. Right, yeah. If disabled actors aren't even getting the room to be seen, mm. which, by the way, is hilarious in itself because I've had situations with clients before where they couldn't even get in the audition room because they were a wheelchair user and the audition room was up a flight of stairs. You know, it, it's just the... the it, it's almost like the, there needs to be a total... Um, and I think it has to... I actually do think it has to be government-led has to be a total reconnect and, and almost a reset. And this is the moment to do it, actually. You know, I, I think, for example, there isn't at the moment for broadcast and media a disability champion within the yeah. government. Um, there is Andrew Muller um, covers that position for the arts um, and, and culture. I can't remember exactly what, what he covers, but you know he is there and does an amazing job. But I don't believe there's someone within broadcast and media. So it needs to be at that level, mm. you know, and then filtered down as, as, as frankly, a priority. Yeah, totally agree. So to talk us through a bit, there's always the thing cited around the London 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games as being a bit of a, a slight turning point and a bit of positive momentum. I mean, do, do you think, A, that's true, and B, you know, has that momentum run out a bit now, or is it just this thing about it takes a generation for change? I think it probably is what you've just said in the latter. I think, yes, there was a lot about the Paralympics, but of course, you know, I've spoken to people in the disabled community who don't identify with the Paralympics. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and, and there's this other thing that, and it's not to discredit Paralympians at all, um, but you know. There, there have you know Paralympians particularly have you know done um, or, or been booked you know on, on various programs, which is obviously right, and they're talented at what they do. But that's not the only solution either. No, you, know, yeah. whole, you know, spectrum of, of people with with varying disabilities, and, and as I say, you know, within that, then people who don't necessarily identify as as being a Paralympian. So I think I think there's maybe this thought that, oh, that's what we need. We then, you know, we we take everyone associated with Paralymp with the Paralympics, we put them on telly. Well, in fact, that didn't even happen. I mean, I think I, I worked out recently that um, the last leg on Channel 4, which came out of 
the Paralo- the 2012 Paralympics. Mm. And it's now run for 18 series. Now, obviously, in every show, you have Adam Hills presenting and um, Alex Brooker yeah. as one of the, the hosts. But other than them, I've only ever counted in 18 series six, six disabled guests. Wow. So if, if disabled people aren't even being booked yeah. on floor four's flagship yeah. led programme, yeah. So I don't, I think there has been particular disability, there has been this tokenistic thing of almost saying, well, we'll just include the odd person here and there, and then Mm. we've done that, and then we don't need to do it again for a while. Yeah, a bit, tick boxes. And I think actually the broadcasters, and and, and not just broadcasters, but producers, brands, I think they do the the great British public a huge disservice. Mm. Because my belief is, if the British public like you, they like you and get behind you. Like Lee won Britain's Got Talent because people liked him. Yeah. Irrespective of his disability. People mm. like him, found him funny, voted for him, he won. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. You know, it's again, it's not rocket science. So it's it's breaking down the fear. And I also think within these organizations, what what would really help, similarly in government, in parliament, across the board, and and I know that the Valuable 500 campaign is fundamental to this, um, and which I love the whole concept of, yeah. um, is getting people in senior positions, disabled people in senior positions, who will impact the decision-making. Yeah, absolutely. And that's when we'll see the real change. Yeah, like when we looked at the advertising industry, there's this sort of, again, statistical, you know, I'm never normally a stat guy, but they're so powerful when they're in the right context. And it was, there was around seven, 800 people that are vegan in the UK. And if you look the last year, so many brands are falling over them, you know, tripping over each other to do influencer campaigns and general campaigns about, you know, for vegan food, right? So you've got, six to eight hundred thousand vegans and as you say you got 13 14 million disabled people and we're back to that 0.06 percent and it, and it but the the reason I back to your point just now the connection is that probably in the, the sort of advertising marketing world there are going to be you know some people that are vegans and very involved in that deciding what to do but there aren't disabled people in that industry as much. So therefore you're not getting that uptake of campaigns around disability. So, I mean, you and I are just at the forefront at the minute of trying to change these industries and it it doesn't happen in a day and it can be exhausting as well. But, but you know, it, it is exciting at the same time to see the potential that with the right stats in the right framing, you know, and getting them to understand the benefit and the opportunity there's a lot of change can come as well. I mean, you know, on a, if people need a reason why, other than the moral, ethical, yeah. legal yeah. reasons, just look at the bottom line. Exactly. I went to an event, I think it was last year, where someone spoke and referenced a report done in America which proved by embracing diversity in, in all forms, increased business, made business, basically made yep. businesses more money. Why would no, what, you know, why would no people not want to engage with that? I don't, I don't get it. You know, we, we, we just have to, I think it is, as I say, it's about resetting or, or, or even taking this opportunity you know, and it's, and it's not an equal playing field in the sense that obviously there are still challenges um, to, to overcome, mm. you know, even even in the way I was talking about being able to, to um, you know, to record or make programmes or, or whatever at the moment. But if, if, we can, if we can't do it now, we can't take this opportunity to realise the importance of doing it now, mm. I don't know when else... Yeah is a better time. Agreed. It's kind of a watershed moment, really, isn't it? I think so. You know, and, and and as I say, I think a lot of the time, the desire, the willingness, the impetus is there. It's just, it's just, 
I'll tell you what it is. It's, you know, as much as I'm enjoying speaking to you, obviously, um, there's too many events, too many mm. chats, too many meetings, too many discussions, too many, what would we call this campaign or, or whatever, you know, yeah. and, and, and whilst that's all really important, it absolutely is. Yeah. We you just, need that action. Yeah, we just need to go on. And, and as I say, a lot of the decisions that can be made to make this different are really easy ones. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, when I'm now speaking to a lot of brands about the influencer marketing you know, proposition, one of the ones I often cite is the Mars Malteser ads, which, of yeah. course, Sam, yeah. who you represent, was was in i mean i i don't know i don't know you're re representing about that no time, but you're obviously familiar like i mean that is there any sort of look back on what benefit that gave to mars on the bottom line Do you know if there's well, any she, i wish I, I remember she's told me and it was incredible i need to get sam on the show anyway so yeah, yeah. um she she knows the figures and it's incredible i think it's one of their most successful right campaigns well because weirdly andrew right Disabled people eat chocolate too. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? I know, and, and the thing is, but I'm sure what, what's also interesting about that commercial is that it's not just about the impact on the disabled population, it's about the wider impact yeah. and going, you know, and, and that's obviously what that campaign proved, it engaged on so many different levels, otherwise it wouldn't have had the success. Mm -hmm. It's not just because it it appealed to disabled people you know that's it and that's the other thing it's like this thing that and this is the thing that's like what disability isn't appealing or it isn't you know as i say i it's i have a, a great old time you know yeah. and you know it, it it just brings so many different interesting funny moving um aspects to my life mm. you know i mean i i have you know I have a a, re, uh, um, a relationship with disability work-wise, but also personally, a number of years ago, I was um, diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome with ME. Mm -hmm. And whilst I'm so much better and, you know, touch wood, the, 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 the periods when I still get it are, are few and far between. Yeah. Um, I think that's the other thing that, and this is it, you know, it, it just affects people or even if it's not you directly, but people you know, mm. It touches everyone in so many different ways. Well, it's your point about people being in higher roles and positions. So I imagine someone is like a co-founder or CEO of a bigger business. It doesn't matter what industry. And they've had ME, chronic fatigue, and they've had to work out how to do the job and be productive, but also manage their health and their energy. And they've they've done that. You know, they've found ways, like you have found ways to do mm -hmm. that. But you would view your your workforce and your employees so differently because you would say, yes, the business needs productivity. There's stuff that has to be done, but maybe the way it's done and the times that it's done are more flexible. And the world's got a bit better with flexible working and now obviously remote working. <laughs> yeah. And ever. yeah so, I mean, again, I think you're right about this sort of watershed moment as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think that's back to that importance of people with lived experience of disability and, and a lot of people have had the lived experience in higher roles but they've not felt able to be almost outed if you like yeah. there's a whole thing about disclosing disability and people almost covered up their dyslexia because they didn't know what they would be judged by their bosses and their colleagues but what if you know their ways of being productive is helpful to other people in a company so that there's a lot around that owning and being proud of our difference mm -hmm. because actually it's surprising how many other people will benefit when people share their story like you just shared that to me you know it, mm -hmm. it will have waves that are so positive beyond anyone ever knows so so yeah. it's so important to be yeah. open about it definitely and it's and it's having and that's why i think you know media broadcast arts entertainment i think sometimes you know and, and there, there may be an argument during this time that a lot of those things are not a priority but they're so important you know you know when we think about the number of people at the moment who are living on their own in isolation you know something like the television is, is a huge access point 
Yeah. And and so even more reason to be representing the population across across programming, across you know, um, across advertising. I mean, across so many different things. I just I, I think I mean it's essentially um, such a simplistic thing to say, yeah. but it's it's just making it's making it part of everything that we do yeah. so we get to the stage where it's it's about equality of opportunity everyone's being considered and therefore the people who are booked are booked because they are the best for the job mm, absolutely absolutely yeah you know. no, i totally agree andrew totally agree well um, we'll start winding down in a few minutes i think the mm. last thing i wanted to just ask you and touch upon was you know obviously we're and others like valuable 500 and, and others still are all trying to bang down the door and educate and change the sort of industry side and that's ongoing. Um, I know that you can't represent every disabled talent in the country or the world, at least at the moment. You know, maybe you'll get some yeah, and scale up, you know, but just as a general sentiment to disabled influence, because I think, you know, particularly with like Instagram and YouTube, there's so much opportunity to start building your own profile and and just get going without much barrier to entry um but yeah just just some thoughts for people that that they want to get more involved in it but maybe they think there's not a career or there's not a job what what sort of things would you would you share with them actually that, that was one thing i was going to say is that the, the thing i find most um interesting and also infuriating and this is not with the people who say it to me but i've had a number of disabled people saying Oh, it's not for me. This career is not for me. Um, I don't, I you know, I don't think I could do it. And you know, and, and th that would be my main thing is to say, uh, you know, just look at go on my website alone and look at the the disabled people who I represent and what they do across so many different platforms, whether it's TV, radio, live, Instagram, social media influencing, whatever it is. And 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 you know and don't don't be under any illusion. Irrespective of disability, this kind of industry is hard. Mm, it, mm. Do not go into it without a work ethic, yeah. or uh, uh, um, or or being able to take what frankly is a roller coaster ride. You know yeah. of ups and downs and rejections. You know, and, and I just don't see how that will ever change in, in that kind of industry. And you know, in many ways, that's life as well, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it goes. Well, but, and, I, and I would say not to, for example, like quit your day job with the idea of it, but build it up on the side, yeah. and then when yeah. it gets going, you may eventually look to go full time with it. Exactly, and and you know, the thing I find particularly about the, the people who I work with is, you know, and, and there's a lot of chat about, particularly in broadcast media, about authenticity, likability, you know, being genuine, you know, and, and having interesting perspectives and viewpoints and backstories. Well, you know, as I say, each of my disabled clients have got all of those things in abundance. And, you know, and, and don't underestimate the value that you will have going forward in fact this is a really good time to be if you're thinking about a career because frankly there's going to come a time in the not too distant future when even to as i was talking about earlier to double from five to ten percent that extra five percent is a lot of people required a lot of people yeah totally so, you know and that's not even getting to half of, of what we need to get to yeah so you know please do not think that you're not relevant that you're not you know, able in the sense of it, you know, to make it a career because you absolutely are. Yeah. Um, and you know, but but always think about what is your unique perspective or point that you've got. Yeah. To get across because that's what will make the difference. Yeah, that's really well said. I totally agree with everything you said there, Andrew. Now, just one more thing: we've had a question about your website. Is it andrewrotetalent.com? It is. Okay, I'll pop that on the chat. Thank you. I think I can bring it up. There we go. Yeah. AndrewRoachTalent.com. Bit of free advertising. That's what I like. Always good, right? You can't beat the free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Cool. I mean, it'd be good to just hear a couple of thoughts on how it 
how does it work? You know, how have you met people you represent and have people just come to you cold for for different, you know, talents? And yeah, just a bit more how that's worked with the people you represent. I mean, there's been a mixture of people I've approached, people who've approached me and people who have been put in touch with me through other clients or through the likes of broadcasters or producers saying, yeah. why do you think networking in general? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so ad hoc. It's so kind of random sometimes. Sometimes me going, oh, I like that person. I'll just contact them and see, you know, that, that's what happened with Bryony, for example. I saw her on the Bake Off. I thought, God, I love her. And um, we got in touch and that was it. You know, it, yeah. Lee, I met through one of my clients. Adam, I met through one of my clients. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's some people who've come to me, yeah, it's just been totally varied. And that's why I'd always say, you know, don't, don't be frightened to make that approach because yeah. I don't know everyone. You know, I yeah. how would I know, you know, what everyone does you know we we hadn't met until we ended up randomly in the house the houses of parliament um so you know it's it's it is it's it's it, but i think that's always been the case with this industry there is a lot of that um but there and, and there are as i say more agents out there than people might think working with disabled people and um you know whether it's from a kind of more creative modeling acting point of view or, you know, um, like me with people who are in the media generally, like mm. presenting and stuff. So, but we, you know, we basically just need to collectively come at people as a force yeah. of just amazing, multifaceted, talented, interesting yep. people who people can't, you know, who the industry just can't ignore. And yeah. I think. Only by doing that in numbers mm. and pushing will will that actually start to to get through. It yeah. is starting and it has started. Yeah, in, there is like, a momentum, as you say, it yeah. just it should be quicker and more immediate and not yeah. not even be a problem right now. No. But it yeah, no. it is gonna take a bit of time. I mean I, as soon as I've been looking into other influencers as we're starting to talk to more clients, it's phenomenal how many people are out there doing really cool stuff. Like I've, um, we've onboarded a client yesterday that's doing adaptive fitness, for example. So we're going to be working with her on finding influencers that can do adaptive video workouts for her platform. And, you know, there's just so many cool things going on out there. As you say, it's just raising awareness that it's there because some people just don't even realise and, and come in at industry with those numbers. Well, I think I was mentioning to you, that Lucy, who we look after, you know, she was using um, the Be My Eyes app mm. to do something particularly with a brand. I thought it was it was fascinating to me because I was like, God, I hadn't even thought about, I knew about the Be My Eyes app, I think, because actually Lucy had told me about it, but I hadn't even thought about the, the multi-functional purpose of it. Yeah. You know, and, and also not just the, the practical application of it, but but the almost... Um, the the life reasons as to why you know you might need to use an app like that for something that's maybe quite personal yeah. or you know and it's and, and that's it and I think that's the other thing there's so many fantastic things going on that maybe and it's just the awareness and getting yeah. it out there and then having the people engage from frankly with the money or you know if you're a broadcaster commissioning and, and sitting back and seeing, not the negative, but the positive impact yeah, that all these things will have. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree, Andrew. Listen, it's been fantastic chatting through you everything too. here. Well done with all your great work. And thank you for your passion and your, your energy. I know you're making a, a big difference for a lot of people already. So thank don't you. forget to pat yourself on the back as well. And, uh, <laughs> we'll do. We'll, we'll catch up again for champagne at parliament yeah <laughs> why not i mean now we've met there i think that's the only place we should ever meet absolutely good high standards right yeah, keep that going <laughs> is there anything you want to finish off saying to people watching not just well apart from anything i'll keep keep safe during 
um, yeah. well and safe during this whole thing. But thank you. you know, use it as an opportunity to to think and to to reset and and set a kind of new agenda and mm. and momentum. You know, we, we need to just keep going, basically. Yeah, yeah, very well said. Cool. Well, have a fantastic day, Andrew. Thanks for everyone who's watching now, and I'll see you again tomorrow. We've got Cameron Malik from Disability Rights UK, so we're going to be a bit back onto the sort of um, campaigning and political side. And I keep calling it a jigsaw puzzle because I'm every day there's a new person on the show, and it's fascinating how the law and the economics and the politics and it all overlaps, but everyone's doing their bit in the different parts of the puzzle. So as we've seen today, it's uh, it's interesting to zoom out and, and see the bigger picture and look at it from that perspective. So yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. And thanks again, Andrew. You're very welcome. See you soon. Cheers.